Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, after my update on Vertiporfin last week, I thought I'd turn to another agent that supposedly stimulates wound healing as well as having a lot of other purported benefits, including causing hair growth. I'm talking about what's known as copper peptides. These copper peptide thingamaboper things have been around since the 1970s at least, and it is possible to buy lotions and creams today that contain them. And a popular example would be something called trichomin, which used to be pretty popular in the hair loss community, but these days, with the exception of one particular asshole on YouTube whom I'm not going to mention, I almost never hear anyone talk about it anymore. So, what are copper peptides and should you even care about them? Is there any evidence that they do anything at all to stop hair loss? Well, much of the work on copper peptides comes from this one particular guy, and he's a researcher named Lauren Pickert. In 1973, Dr. Pickert was trying to identify what was considered at the time to be a mysterious growth factor that had been found in the blood. The growth factor stimulated the growth of liver cells, and it seemed to be a small molecule. Well, Dr. Pickert, he synthesized a peptide, which is a small protein fragment containing just three amino acids, including glycine, histidine, and lysine. In this article here, Dr. Pickert published his findings and concluded that the tripeptide that he synthesized behaved identically to the unknown serum growth factor and that they were in fact the exact same molecule. In fact, this peptide had the unusual property of binding to copper atoms and it proved to be an essential part of the body's chemistry. It turns out that copper is absolutely absolutely necessary for life, but too much copper can be toxic and it can even turn your blood green. So this molecule known as GHKCU shown here is a molecule that can bind and release a copper atom and so it is essential for regulating copper levels in the body. Note that CU is an abbreviation for copper in the periodic table. So this copper peptide has been investigated as a treatment for a lot of different conditions, but here at the Hair Cafe Institute of Science, we're most interested in hair. So what does copper have to do with hair? Well, most of the research on copper peptides has been authored or co-authored by Dr. Pickhart, who apparently early on decided he wanted to sell therapies based on copper peptides. In this next article from 1991, Dr. Pickhart is a member of the ProCyte Corporation, and this corporation was developing synthetic variations on the naturally occurring copper peptides. One of these variations was called Yamin, and another was called PC1038. These copper peptides supposedly supposedly had antioxidant effects as well as stimulated collagen production. In the study, PC1038 was injected into mice during the telogen resting phase and the antigen growth phase of the hair cycle. In the mice injected with copper peptide analog, the telogen phase was shortened and hair growth improved during the antigen phase too, as seen in this graph here. So even though these results do sound like they're good, this was yet another mouse study and I know we're all sick of hearing about how everything regrows hair in mice. Of course, you should always be skeptical of mouse data because mouse hair and skin is very different from human hair and skin. Also, the ProCyte company was in the business of selling these copper peptides, as you can see from this announcement from 1996, touting the release of Yamin copper peptides for wound care. So, it looks like Dr. Pickhart early on decided to go into the industry and profit from his discovery. Now, there's nothing at all wrong with wanting to be an entrepreneur, but it does introduce the element of bias into the data published by Dr. Pickhart. So, let's see if we can find some data from an independent research group that might confirm Dr. Pickhart's findings. Well, this next study from 1993 is from the University of Wisconsin and was not co-authored by Dr. Pickhart. In the study, several interventions were studied, including minoxidil and another copper peptide variation, this one called PC1031. This study was done on fuzzy rats. Yes, that's their actual name, so a little step up from mice, but still not a human study. Besides these rats, though, macaca monkeys were also used, which are a lot closer to humans and even can develop androgenic alopecia. Well, well, not surprisingly, the studies showed that 2% and 5% minoxidil, as well as a topical 5-AR inhibitor called 4-MA, worked to regrow hair in the monkeys and rats. Unfortunately, the data on the copper peptide was presented with very little detail. All we have is a quote that both minoxidil and PC1031 induced, quote, progression of the cycle and elongation of follicular size after two to four months of treatment compared to the patterns of vehicle groups, unquote. Also, it looks like the copper peptide was 
was only tested in the fuzzy rats, not the monkeys, which would have been better because monkeys are more closely related to humans than rats. Well, at least most human beings are. So, so far, we still have no human data. So let's go ahead and fast forward. And once again, it is the good Koreans to the rescue. This article is titled, quote, The Effect of Tripeptide Copper Complex on Human Hair Growth in Vitro, unquote. Well, the authors of the study noted that the original copper peptide, GHKCU, quote, stimulates the proliferation of dermal fibroblast and elevates the production of vascular endothelial growth factor by dermal fibroblast. However, GHKCU decreased the secretion of transforming growth factor beta-1, TGF-beta-1, from dermal fibroblast, unquote. Well, since VEGF is a hair growth factor and TGF-beta-1 is a negative growth factor, it sounds like GHKCU should improve hair growth, at least in theory, right? Well, the study did use human hair, specifically hair follicles from 10 healthy volunteers, and these follicles were placed in a culture medium. Another copper peptide variant called AHKCU was used in the study, and it was obtained from, you guessed it, it's Dr. Pickert's Procyte Corporation again. Anyways, AHKCU stimulated elongation of hair follicles, though the highest doses actually stunted hair growth, as you can see in this figure, where in the bar graph, the control group is the bar on the left, and the concentration of copper peptide increases in the following bars on the right. The study also looked at the effects of the copper peptides on the biochemistry of the hairs. AHKCU decreased BAX and increased BCL2, as you can see in this figure. BCL2 is a protein that is expressed when hairs go from the telogen resting phase phase into the antigen growth phase. BAX and another protein, caspase 3, are proteins that trigger cell death known as apoptosis, and this apoptosis is what ends the antigen growth phase. So the copper peptides increase the antigen-promoting protein BCL2 and decrease the proteins that occur at the end of the antigen, BAX and caspase 3. So all this looks like that, at least in cultured human hair follicles, copper peptides look pretty good. But what about in whole intact human beings? Well, well, in 2008, Dr. Pickert resurfaces yet again with this article here. It's like this guy has a monopoly on copper peptide research. In this paper, Dr. Pickert reviews the data on using the original copper peptide, GHKCU, for improving wound healing. He mentions the effect of GHKCU on hair growth, this time showing yet another goddamn mouse study in this figure right here, which shows hair growth with enlarged hair follicles in a mouse which had GHKCU injected into the skin. As for human studies, how However, all we have on this is this quote right here. Quote, a commercial GHKCU analog product, Trichomin, was developed to increase hair growth, claims to have boosted hair growth 33% more than that of 2% minoxidil, a proven agent, unquote. However, if we look at the reference for this claim that copper peptides are better than 2% minoxidil, we see this. This is just a ProSite press release. So Dr. Pickard is quoting his own company's research here without providing any details, and this is not even a published research article. So what's Dr. Pickard up to these days, you may wonder? Well, here he is from the ResearchGate website. Apparently, he is in charge of the Skin Biology Company, and here is their slick homepage. As you can clearly see, they sell a lot of skincare products, including, you guessed it, copper peptide products. Here is their hair signals therapy solution containing not only GHKCU copper peptides, but also tea extracts, sal palmetto, and aloe vera gel. So it looks like rather than pursuing randomized controlled human trials of copper peptides for human hair growth in order to prove that this stuff actually works, Dr. Pickard has skipped that step altogether and instead is marketing these copper peptides for a company that I believe he owns and he certainly profits from. So since there are no human trials of copper peptides for hair loss, I doubt it works at all. If it really worked, someone would have done trials on it already and proven that it works. Hell, I haven't even seen any anecdotal evidence that it works. If you want to see how effective copper peptides really are for hair loss, then let's go ahead and take a look at the copper peptide king himself, Dr. Pickard. I rest my case. So maybe that's a little bit of a cheap shot, but I think copper peptides are just another example of a treatment that at one point seemed to hold a lot of promise, but none of that promise has really panned out. I'd of course like to be proven wrong on this. I mean, it would be nice to have another growth stimulant besides minoxidil. It would be great if a proper human study could be done, but lacking that, I really can't recommend copper peptides for hair growth. There may be more evidence of the effect of copper peptides on things like wound healing and anti-aging in the skin, but the effect on hair growth just hasn't been firmly established at this point. So until then, I'd bin the copper peptides and wait for more promising growth stimulants like the Wint Pathway Stimulants, of which I've done many videos on that I'll link below. So until then, I'll see y'all next time, my fellow hair loss witchers. Take care. God bless.